Anyone moving to Costa Rica has a lot of questions about water. How am I going to get it? How much is it going to cost? What should I be thinking about if I'm looking to buy property in regards to water? Today, I'm going to address those three subjects in a quick five-minute overview of water in Costa Rica. Greetings from Costa Rica. My name is Matt Rosensteel. Thank you very much for watching. Today, I'm giving a short five-minute overview of water here in Costa Rica. I'm going to cover, first of all, how it's administered or how you can expect to get water at your property. Second, I'll talk about the cost of water. And finally, I'll give you a few critical questions you should be asking if you're thinking about buying real estate here in regards to water. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get started with our first topic, water administration here in Costa Rica. You will see a national government ministry here called AYA, that's IEA. I'm not even gonna waste time this year with explaining what the acronyms mean, but it's the National Water Ministry. AYA, IEA, administers local community asadas, which are spelled A-S-A-D-A-S. -A -A I'm not gonna explain that acronym also, but Essentially, it's a local community provider that will be bringing you your drinking water in Costa Rica. Importantly, asadas serve very small areas, communities, and populations. These are not huge metropolitan water distributors outside of those big cities in Costa Rica. If you're living anywhere in Guanacaste, the local water administration, the asada, is a very small organization that serves a very small number of people. And that can be where you see a lot of the quirks that come with water. Outages when pipes break, uh, insufficiency of wells, etc. Because really, we're not talking about massive national infrastructure, but highly localized infrastructure. You'll be paying your ASADA your monthly bill. How much will that be? Obviously, it's going to depend a ton on how much water you use. But fortunately, Costa Rica regulates water prices as part of their planned economy to make sure that poor people have access to affordable water. So for a reasonable ration of water, your local asada, the administrator, can only charge you, I think, maybe 2,500 or 3,500 colones, five or six dollars a month for a small amount of base rate usage. From there, if you're looking to, let's say, irrigate a lawn, I can guarantee you your water bill is gonna go up. Whereas in months without much irrigation and really just using a little bit of water for our goats, chickens, ducks, the house, etc., my wife and I typically see a water bill between 15 and $20 a month. If we have a month where we've planted a ton of new stuff and we use a soda water to irrigate it, it's going to go up from there. You can see people with huge luxury homes, lots of lawns, tons of landscaping with lots of irrigation that are paying two or three hundred dollars a month if you're at that level of, let's say, a half acre really kept green. Anyhow, finally, let's cover some critical questions you should know or ask if you're going to look at buying property here in Costa Rica regarding water. First of all, as part of your due diligence on any property, the local ASADA should be willing to give you a letter certifying that they will provide water to your lot or uh, to your home. But really, in the case of an undeveloped property, this comes into play because that water letter certifying that they will be willing to provide service is something you'll need for construction. Second of all, you need to know about your water meter. If there's an existing water meter on the property, you're in great shape and really probably already connected to flowing water from your local asada. If you're not connected to a meter, you need to make sure that not only do you have your water letter in order, but that the local asada is actually capable of expanding service to your project as you develop it. 
Really, you want to make sure that the capacity of your local organization is going to be able to fulfill the water service that you actually need. And finally, a critical question about water here is definitely looking into the history of the Asada and the history of the wells in your area. There are places in Costa Rica that have less water than the local community needs to get through the dry season, especially here in Guanacaste. When we went through massive droughts, there were wells that were not sufficient to provide enough water for the local community. When you're going to buy property, you need to be asking everybody involved, your neighbors, the real estate agent, your lawyer, what's the water situation here? What happened in 2015? And how can I be sure that the Osada is gonna be able to provide me with water? There are a lot of communities here that have expanded faster than the capacity to supply it with water as well. If you're buying into a booming area, there's a probability that the local Asada has had some issue along the way being able to meet that demand. I'm sure I went over five minutes. I'll have my new awesome editor, Stefan, take it out, try to trim it down a little bit, but thank you very much for watching. Again, my name is Matt Rosenstiel. Have a great day.